an absolutely wild ride today on Wall Street. Markets in shambles, markets beginning to panic, and there is carnage everywhere. Uh, everything today pretty much in the red with the exception of the defensive utility sector, uh, energy, and of course, gold, and even silver came back at the end to come up a couple cents. But gold had a solid day up around $30, hovering right about $2,000 as I make this video. And what do we have to look forward to? Uh, I don't know if this is the meltdown, if these markets are going to rebound and come back. Uh, what I do believe is that the Fed at some point is going to just bring in so much QE. They're going to do everything in a type of last resort, uh, last ditch effort to try and save these markets. Uh, I truly do believe we are going to see a, a rate increase this month. I don't think they can go back on that, but if they don't raise rates, would that shock me? No, it wouldn't. I do believe we will get a 25 basis point hike. Inflation absolutely running out of control. The Fed is being so irresponsible right now, uh, doing absolutely nothing, but continuing uh, to print more money and to continue to buy into these markets, still buying mortgage-backed securities, still buying treasury bonds, and God knows what else they are buying. But let's get back into what happened today. Dow Jones down 800 points. NASDAQ down 482, hitting bear market territory. Crude oil at one point was down, excuse me, was up $130 a barrel right now, hovering around $120 a barrel. Gold hitting $2,000 today. Uh, silver well above $25. Uh, Bitcoin, as I make this video, hovering right at $38,000, not having a good day. Uh, again, is it really a safe haven asset? Is this really is this real digital gold? Absolutely not. As soon as there's risk, fear, and panic, we're watching what people are running to, and it looks like it's gold. Airlines decimated today, Delta down almost 13%, United down 15%, cruise lines absolutely vaporized. I got a, a call last night from a good friend of mine uh, in the state of Florida, and I won't mention his name, but uh, he's got some money and he, he's got it diversified cash in multiple banks across the country. He got a letter yesterday and he called me immediately saying that his, his account has been deemed dormant and that they're basically going uh, to take his money, seize his money out of his account if there is no activity uh, in the very near future. And he was stunned, uh, literally shaken, um, that this letter he was reading uh, was telling him that the bank that he trusted, that he put his money in, because he's not doing transactions every month at this, this account where he just parks money, that the, that gives the bank the ability, the excuse to come in, seize your money, then turn it over to the state so they can donate it for highways and police and fire and, and whatever they want to do because of inactivity, because you're not using that account every day, every month. Uh, they can go in, seize your money because of inactivity. And his bank stated that if there's no activity in 12 months, they can do that. Other banks say 24 months. I looked online, some say three years to five years. Also, this includes uh, safe deposit boxes. So if you haven't been in uh, for a year at this particular bank, uh, they can seize your uh, safe deposit box. Very, very scary. So make sure that you check the rules and uh, regulations with your bank. Make sure that if your account hasn't been active, maybe you uh, have some type of activity. But again, dormant account inactivity can deem you a victim of, of a bank seizure. So be very, very cautious. Wanted to bring that point up because everything that is happening right now, people have money in the bank and they think it's safe. And we are seeing so many things now take place um, that the system is beginning, in my opinion, to melt down. And the system is going to do some really crazy things. And the system may take your money. And they have these laws and these rules that allow them to do this legally. So be very, very careful. 
US crude oil briefly tops $130 a barrel, 13 month high, a possible Western ban of Russian oil. How high can oil go, ladies and gentlemen? We are seeing uh, some crazy figures out there now. And to think that oil can't go over $200 a barrel, um, it can. It can. And this is going to be absolutely catastrophic on the middle class. I, I was out today, and uh, if you saw the opening of the video, uh, $5.99 for super unleaded. I saw diesel today at $5.89 at, at one of these cheaper stations, $5.89 at a cheap gas station. So you got a 30 gallon tank on your SUV or your F-250. Uh, that is about $180 for a fill up. And these people who drive these vehicles for work, are you filling up once a week, twice a week? I mean, just think if you're filling up twice a week, that's nearly $400 a week to run a large SUV or, or pickup truck, diesel or gas, that's $1,600 a month if you're filling up twice a week for work. Uh, this, uh, this is really uh, bananas, really, really bananas. How long can people afford to do this? And we all know that people are now running to the credit cards, but you know, people have limits on credit cards. And what happens when the banks come out and start uh, cutting people's uh, credit lines, credit limits 50% or, or shutting down accounts? They've got to, the banks have got to see what's happening here that uh, the average person now is running to credit cards. They're going to run up all five, six, seven, or 12 of their cards. And at some point, I, I think we're going to see the banks step in and say, hey, your credit, your credit limit has been cut in half. It's not 10,000, it's 5,000, or it was 10,000, it's 2,500. They're gonna have to um, uh, protect themselves. So it's just a matter of time before some of these cards start getting uh, hammered and people, then what, what do they do then? What do they do then when they can't put fuel in the tank to go to work, to, to go to the grocery store? This is really getting out of control. National average for a gallon of gas tops $4.10, the highest price at the pump since 2008. We all remember 2008 and what was happening back then. Um, really, really uh, nuts. $7 a gallon for regular gasoline at, at one at least one gas station in LA. Shell station located at Olympic Boulevard and Fairfax Avenue. I saw this yesterday. They had regular at $6.99 premium at $7.29. So, Everything that we're watching happening in these markets right now, and a lot of this has to do with oil. So um, I'm not gonna get political here. Uh, I'm not, not gonna get political, but um, this more than likely is going to get much, much worse. And as it does, we are going to see markets get rocked. There's no doubt that the Fed is gonna to have to step in here and print a lot of money and try to turn it around. This will blow up in their faces. This will be really a nuclear bomb uh, on the economy and on these markets because we are going to continue to lose purchasing power. We're gonna watch inflation continue to run out of control and they can continue to blame everything on what's happening in Eastern Europe, but nobody's taking the blame for what's really happening here. And, and all this money printing, all this reckless spending, leaving interest rates at 0%, uh, mortgage rates under 3%, uh, uh, six, seven, eight trillion dollars uh, of, of stimulus money pumped into the economy. We just spent over the last year, what, eight trillion dollars in giving people benefit checks, stimulus checks, extended unemployment, uh, triple P loans. And this is where we're at today, ladies and gentlemen. This is what all the money printing did. Now we have inflation running out of control. And we don't even know what the real number is on inflation. Is it 15%, 16%, 17%, 20%? Uh, it is going absolutely bonkers. And it's going to get worse. And their answer will be print more money. Exactly what got us into this situation, what got us into this mess, is their answer to get us out, print more money. And this will be detrimental to the economy and, and these markets. These markets are in trouble, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not saying that they're melting down right now, but I think we're getting a very, very serious warning of what's to come. Can they bounce back? Yes. On what news? I don't know. Maybe everything in Eastern Europe clears up. 
and that's fine. It can all it can all clear up, go away. But the bottom line is this: we still have nearly thirty one trillion dollars in debt. We have nearly two hundred trillion in unfunded liabilities like Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. Uh, we have a, a major uh, deficit and deficits, uh, municipalities that are broke, pensions that are broke. So no matter what happens over there, we have a real mess right here and we cannot stop spending. U.S. retirement funds, heavy on stocks, brace for losses. This should concern anyone with a pension because maybe your pension is invested in Russia right now. Equity holdings are at a 10-year high. Nation's largest pension, that's CalPERS, right here in California, Holdings have fallen to $475 billion as of March. That's from $482 billion at the end of January. There is more than $4 trillion in U.S. state and local pension funds. These funds need hundreds, hundreds of billions of dollars more to cover future promises. If you have a pension fund, if you're paying into one, if you're reliant uh, on a pension, you need to be very, very careful right now because I believe somewhere down the road, I don't know how far down the road, but a lot of people are going to take a massive haircut with their pensions. And I think a lot of them are going to see 25 and 50% haircuts. And we're going to see pensions absolutely annihilated, gone, vaporized because of what is about to happen in this economy and in the stock market. The stock market is no doubt beginning to melt down. Yes, they will try to prop it back up. They're going to try and bring it back, but it's a, it's a house, a house of cards on quicksand. It is not gonna stand for very long before it collapses, and it's going to take down many of these pension funds. These public funds are dependent on the stock market. Public pension funds had a median 61% of their assets in stocks as of December 31st. You know, we talk about diversification. Everybody talks uh, about diversification. And it, it, everybody's like, well, you need to have money there, there, put it in that, put it in that, put it in that. 61% of these pensions, pensions are in the stock market. And what happens when the stock market begins to unravel? Over the past 12 years, these pension funds stayed afloat with a booming stock market thanks to the Fed. And now we have a downturn. Uh, a Fed that uh, pumped in trillions of dollars into the economy, into the markets, kept interest rates at zero, uh, propped up this uh, massive bubble in real estate. Uh, most of this, all the doing of the Fed. And now the Fed is beginning to lose control. People who think that the Fed has, ev has everything in control, that the Fed um, knows what it's doing, that the, the Fed isn't gonna let the system fail or collapse, I think you're wrong. I think the Fed is in a corner. I think the Fed doesn't know what to do. And I think the Fed is smart enough to understand that this whole thing is coming down. When that happens, nobody knows. But I think we're getting very, very close. Who's going to make up the shortfall with these pensions? Well, it'll be the workers. It'll be government employees. It's going to be you, the taxpayer, because they're going to raise property taxes. They're going to raise sales taxes. They're going to raise every tax possible to uh, try and keep these pensions glued together. It won't be enough. Uh, just, just think right now, paying $6 plus for a gallon of gas, and they're going to want to raise your taxes to uh, keep the promise uh, of these pensions. These pensions, uh, mathematically, from the beginning, they knew that, they, that these pensions could not last. Mathematically, it's impossible to continue to be paying police officers and firefighters over $100,000 a year uh, when they retire at 50 years old. I mean, you're talking about the average retirement for each one of these people, teachers, uh, the city workers, people at the, at the, water, at the water plant, uh, the, the disposal plant. We're going to be paying everybody eighty, ninety, dollars $100,000 a year, and they, and they retire between 50, 60 years old, and they live another 30 years. It's a lot of money. Mathematically, this doesn't add up. It's absolutely impossible. The big returns that these pensions were getting is winding down. Uncertainty and market volatility will impact these funds and it will be a major concern for anyone in a pension. So 
be your own central bank. You better put away for a rainy day. You better put away in case your pension cease to exist two years from now, five years from now. This stuff's real, ladies and gentlemen. And people a, a, a year or two ago who told you none of this could ever happen, weren't they looking and reading the data that, that uh, over half of the pensions in America are unfunded, that uh, they're reliant on the stock market to go up over 7% a year? Uh, they're doubling down gambling uh, at the casino here? Uh, that you know eventually you can't pay everybody $100,000 a year to retire and they live 25 or 30 years. I mean, we can't give everybody two or $3 million dollars for life. This just does not make sense. Kentucky teacher's pension loses $3 million after selling Russian investments. Ask yourself, how many pensions right now are invested in Russia? How many U.S. banks, how many hedge funds, how many institutions right now are invested in Russia? The Kentucky teacher's retirement system admitted to losing $3 million due to its selling of the Russian bank, Surebank. They sold uh, their funds back in February, uh, February 23rd, the day before Russia invaded Ukraine. Very, very lucky. Kentucky State Treasurer Ellison Ball said that the pension fund still holds some Russian investments. Had the pension waited one more week, shares in the bank, share bank, would have lost an additional 90%. So ask yourself, how much of the U.S., how much of the financial institutions here in the U.S. are invested in Russia? WallStreet.com, stocks in Germany, the U.K., France, Italy, and Spain plunge below year 2000 levels. Where are all these people today who said this could never happen? The hedge today, dysfunctional traders concerned Russian CDS uh, credit default swaps won't pay out in the event of default. If Russia defaults, the big U.S. banks uh, who are buying all these corporate bonds over there are going to be bloodied. And why is it that these banks are over there buying up uh, these devastated corporate bonds in Russia? Why are they allowed to do that? I thought we had sanctions. I thought we were you know, against everything happening over there in Eastern Europe. But apparently, if you're a big bank, you can play both sides. And I have to agree with Senator Elizabeth Warren, and I rarely ever do, but I, I've got to agree with her here. She said this, giant Wall Street banks like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs never miss out on an opportunity to get richer, even if it means capitalizing on the Russian invasion and undermining sanctions. I'm not gonna get political here. I'm not taking any side, but what she said here is true. And why are they allowed to do this? There will be no sympathy for these institutional investors when they get bloodied and beaten when Russia defaults. If they do, there will be no sympathy for the JP Morgans, for the PIMCOs, uh, for the Goldman Sachs, etc. Market at risk of collapse if war persists. Second largest gold miner, Mark Bristow, CEO of Barrick Gold. I can't tell anybody out there to buy gold. I don't give financial advice, but it had another very, very good day today and it is doing exactly what it is supposed to do. That is to protect your wealth. And when there is panic, when there is fear, when there is uncertainty, when there is war, gold does what it does. It performs and it holds up as it has done over 5,000 years. I think everybody should have some. I don't know, uh, at these prices now, it is getting very expensive. It's gonna cost you around $2,100 now to buy a physical ounce of gold. The minute there's a pullback and I can buy gold for under $2,000 an ounce, I'm back in buying. Right now, I'm, I'm gonna sit and wait a little bit. If it starts running up uh, higher, I may have to buy a little bit more on the way up. I can't tell anybody what to do. It is very expensive, but um, it's doing what it what it's supposed to do. Uh, people continue to ask me uh, where I buy from, what I recommend. SD Bullion, I have a link down below. I don't care if you buy it. I don't care if you don't buy it. Uh, you can go to the pawn shop. You can go to the jewelry shop. You can go to the coin shop. You can go anywhere online and buy 
from whoever you feel comfortable with or don't buy it all. This isn't uh, to get you to buy anything. I buy it, I've never sold an ounce of gold or silver in my life. All I've been doing over uh, the last uh, 17 years has been buying gold and buying silver. And it's for days like this. Uh, we're not out of the woods here, ladies and gentlemen. This thing could get a lot worse. And if you're relying on paper, uh, if you're relying on credit cards, if you're relying uh, on, on the price of your home to continue to go up, if you're relying on um, this digital gold, uh, Bitcoin, I, I think you're going to be in big trouble. And I think this is the time you better own real things. This is a financial advice. Do what you want to do. Buy the effing dip today if you want to. Go ahead. I'm buying real things. I'm putting cash away, even though... We know that cash is being eaten alive, and that's why I have gold, that's why I have silver, but uh, I do need cash to make a purchase uh, of acreage, and that is going to be my next investment. It will be buying land, uh, a house in the south, in the southern part of this country. That's next, and I'm going to need cash to do that, and if I wasn't doing that, I would own a lot more gold right now. So... Uh, Again, market at risk of collapse, ladies and gentlemen, so be warned. So I'm gonna wrap this video up today, but before I do, there's a couple things that I wanna reiterate here. And it's this, it's not just America's enemies that are worried about the US abusing its world reserve currency and its economy. Our friends are also very worried. And as I said the other day, the U.S. put the world on the dollar standard, and it will be the world that takes the dollar off the world standard. And this article on Shift Gold, dollar worries spur central banks to buy gold. Russian Central Bank bought $4.3 billion of gold between 2019 and 2020. From, from June 2019 to June 2020, bought $4.3 billion dollars of gold and central banks around the world have been buying gold uh, at, at a record pace for the last decade. For the past 10 years, central banks have been on a gold buying spree. In the, in, the, in the past, central banks bought gold because of its vital role in the global financial system. Now they are choosing to buy it because they are worried about the dollar. They have been scared into buying gold and honestly, uh, when I watch what is happening, I'm very scared with what I see and it will probably force me to, to pay these prices right now to buy more physical gold because I'm very worried about what's going to happen to the dollar. And I, I think all of us should be very worried about what's going to happen to the dollar, what's going to happen uh, to the stock market, what's going to happen to these pensions, what's going to happen to bonds. Most central banks wanted to diversify away from dollars. Countries uh, have been adding to the gold reserves. Russia, China, India, Egypt, Indonesia, uh, the Kriegs Republic, Mongolia, Serbia, Turkey, and many more, all looking, way, looking for ways to limit dependence on the U.S. dollar. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. And so uh, as I leave you, don't keep all your money in the bank. Don't keep everything in a safe deposit box at the bank. Don't be 100% in the system. The system is breaking apart. You need to be separating yourself from the system and not just be holding dollars. Wealth is not measured in dollars anymore. Wealth and freedom is measured in ounces. Don't be a debt slave and don't allow the inflation to ravage everything that you have. Be diversified. Own some gold. Own some silver. I especially like gold because it is not as volatile and because all these countries and your main central banks are all stockpiling gold. What do they know that the average person does it? They're not stockpiling Bitcoin or cryptos. They're stockpiling gold, ladies and gentlemen. So as I leave you today, protect yourself and make sure that you own real physical assets like gold. God bless. I look forward to talking with all of you very soon.